Hi everyone, my name is Anna and I'm a children's librarian here at the East Hampton Library and today I am going to read a story and then do a craft with you. So the book I'm reading today is called Pitter Pattern by Joyce Hesselberg. Pitter Pitter Pat, Pitter Pitter Pat, Pitter Pitter Pat, hey it's a Pitter Pitter Pattern. Lou helps her friends take off their wet things. Boot, boot, puddle, boot, boot, puddle. Another pattern. What comes next? Boot, boot, puddle. Milk, apple, cracker, cheese. Milk, apple, cracker, cheese. Milk, apple, cracker, cheese. There are patterns everywhere. How many can you find? After snack time, Lou says goodbye to her friends. She'll see them again next Sunday. Next Sunday? Hey, the days of the week are a pattern too. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then it starts again. Monday. Lou has soccer practice after school on Monday. She and her teammates practice kicking the ball between the cones. In, out, in, out, in, out. Soccer balls are made of black and white shapes that fit together. These shapes curve around the entire ball. Tuesday. On Tuesday, Lou goes to her piano lesson. Hey, look at the piano keys. Two black keys, three black keys, two black keys, three black keys, all the way up the keyboard. The notes on the white keys are a pattern too. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Lou claps her hands together to learn the rhythm of the song. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ah, 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 ta, ti, ti. Ta, a, a, a. Music is full of patterns. Wednesday. Jump, hop, kick, twirl. Jump, hop, kick, twirl. In dance class, the beat of the drum is a pattern. Boom, ba, ba, boom. Boom, ba, ba, boom. And the steps in Lou's dance pattern make dance make a pattern. Jump, hop, kick, twirl. Jump, hop, kick, twirl. Thursday, what a nice day. Lou and her dad go for a walk in the park and there are patterns here. And here. Friday, Lou spends Friday night with her grandma. They curl up in quilts and read a story. The patterns in the quilts all have names. Evening Star, Pinwheels, Attic Windows, and Lou's favorite, Flying Geese. When the story is over, it's time for bed. It's hard to fall asleep. Counting sheep might help. White sheep, white sheep, black sheep. White sheep, white sheep, black sheep. Shh. The next morning, Lou and her grandma ride the bus to the zoo. Saturday. Are there patterns here? And here. Lou loves all the animals she saw today. She can't wait to tell her friends about them. On... Sunday, Sunday, pitter pitter pat, pitter pitter pat, pitter pitter pat. And that is Pitter Pattern by Joy Hesselbrook. So the first thing you can see here is what we're actually going to do. We are going to draw an umbrella 
And I chose this because I really like the different patterns that are shown in the umbrellas throughout the book, um, as well as on the end papers. So this is the project we'll be working on. And for this project, you are going to need paper. Um, you will need a pencil to draw with, and possibly an eraser. I used an eraser a lot. And then you'll need um, markers, colored pencils, crayons, even paint if you want, depending on what type of paper you have. The optional things that you will need um, or can use is a ruler and a, I have a circle here. And I, as I've said before in videos, you can find anything in your house that has a circular pattern, um, upside down cups or saucers, little plates, lids to different things, um, tape rolls. There's a lot of different things you can find in your house that has a circular pattern to use. Okay, so a rainbow it, or an umbrella it is. The next thing I want to show you is this nifty little thing. I like to look for patterns sometimes, <laughs> different form of patterns, maybe I should say templates, um, to help guide us through the drawing process. So I went on Pinterest and I just printed this out. And then we'll do the steps kind of exactly like they are here where you start with the half circle and then you add the little trim and then your stem and then the handle of your stem and then a little bit on the top and then the pattern starts. So I will kind of walk you guys through that. On this page you can see a little bit where I started. Um, I, if I hold it up you can see it a little better. There you go. Um, so I did some different sizes just to give you an idea. The one that we are going to work on together is going to be the very one large one like this, but throughout the book it does show um, umbrellas of different sizes and different patterns, so I just wanted to demonstrate that you could do the, more than one on a page. Um, so here is the big one I started when I followed this design given on um, Pinterest, so just one big one in the middle. And you can see if you look closely where I used my eraser. So I had a difficult time doing the um, handle part on that. So hold up there a little closer. So just to show you guys, an eraser does come in handy and your picture does not have to be perfect by any means. Okay, so let's get started. Um, assuming you have something to trace with, we're gonna put this up here and then you're going to trace halfway around it. If you don't have something and you trust your hand, you can go ahead and do a half circle. Mine, of course, will be just a little bit shaky. Um, and it's easier for me if I turn my paper. I think my hand gets a better angle that way. But, but anyway, so there's my half circle. I'll go over it again and make it a little bit darker for you guys to see. So I draw mine in two parts, um, and then we're going to start the little design, or not the design, the edging. So the easiest way to do this is just to go hump up and back down, hump up and back down, and you're just going to repeat that pattern, which is exactly why I picked this project. So mine don't all have the exact same curve, but they do closely resemble the same size. And as you can see, one side of my umbrella was just a little bit long, so this is where the eraser comes in handy. So the reason I had a ruler, if you guys are really particular about this, or just if you have a ruler handy, if you place the ruler and measure your umbrella from side to side. It's, it's six inches. So you could go through and put little dots at every half inch. Just mark a little dot there all the way across and that will help you keep the spacing of your curves just about right because then you can go up and down to each dot. Okay, so maybe I need to make that a little bit darker 
give you guys just a second to get yours drawn out, especially if you want to go back and add the dots. I should have showed you that beforehand, but some of you are much better with pencils than I am. I know I've got some great artists out there that love to draw. And so you can probably do this without cheating with a circle to trace or a ruler. But anyway, there's the top of my umbrella. So the next step is to find what, see how many we have here? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So this is roughly the middle of my umbrella. So I'm gonna start, actually since I do have my ruler here, we're gonna use it. So we're gonna do it as close to the middle as we can and just draw two straight lines down. And that will be the stem of our umbrella. So now the part that was hardest for me, do a little line here and draw the handle. So you really just want to do, and you can do it either direction, but you want to make a J and then curve it around and come back. So mine is not the prettiest handle. I can go back over and try to shape that up just a little bit. So that is another reason I draw with pencil a lot, so that I can reshape things. And your last step, well second to last actually, is to go over there and put your little top, so where your cane handle and stem goes all the way through. So the last step on our little cheat sheet here from Pinterest shows us the lines that the umbrella has in it. Now not every umbrella has lines in it, so you could actually stop here and do any pattern you want on this. If you want a repeating pattern, you probably want to start within your humps here and draw all the way up to center. And then you're going to go to your next one. I'm actually connecting with a valley in between my humps and drawing up to the center. And curving them just a little bit as I go. And I'm going to turn my paper at an angle here. And we're going to go a few more humps up here. A few more, I keep saying humps, a few more curved lines in this direction. Now on this one, I think I'm going to go one out that way, maybe one out that way. That looks a little bit odd. But that's okay, that's the way I did it. So there is my umbrella with the many different lines. So now you can do your pattern. Let's see what we did on my first one here. So this one, I have a couple of different patterns going on. First I have the green, orange, green, orange, green, orange pattern going across the umbrella. And then within the oranges, I have different patterns going across. So, for this one, I'm going to get you guys started. I'm not going to complete this one because I don't think you um, really want to sit here and watch me color in every single one. But I'm just going to start doing kind of random patterns. So on this one, you could fill in with circles. So there's one way to do it. Um, let's see what color. I'm just going to randomly pick a color and see what comes out. Oh, black. Okay, so I'm going to take the black and fill in my handle. This one's running out just a little bit. So I may have to go back in and find another black marker and fill that in later. So again, I'm just gonna randomly reach into my bag and see what color comes out. Oh, we have blue again. So let's do, we'll do every other one blue and this time I'm going to do solid dots. So on the first one I did circles, and now we're going to do solid dots. So my bag picked my pattern for me. I'm going back to the skinny blue, and I'm going to do lines on this one. And then I'll go back to my thicker one. So we're going to skip that one and that one, and we're going to go over here. And 
actually I'm going to do the same thing. You can do this any way you want, but we're going to, I'm going to try to do patterns that are similar and repetitive. So I'm going to do lines on that one. And then I'm going to skip one and repeat with my solid circles again. I'm not going to fill in the whole thing. You guys get the idea of what I'm doing. And then I'm going to go back over here to the last one and do open circles. And hopefully just by glancing at this and watching me go through those patterns, you guys can get an idea of how to do the different patterns. But you're welcome to use any colors and any designs you want. And that is um, our little drawing lesson today on how to draw a rainbow. Or I keep saying rainbow, thinking about the rain outside. Umbrella. Now, you'll notice on this one I did go in and do raindrops. And raindrops can be done many, many different ways, but I thought that was another good example of showing a pattern. So the way I did my raindrops is I kind of did it in straight lines and just made made marks like this down. Now if you want to do it like the wind is blowing, then you would probably want to do your raindrops at an angle like this. So they're very different. So I did the first line and then I went back and put a dot and just did what I call a little flick on it. Did that all the way up. So you could do it straight down like it's a nice small rain. If it's coming in at an angle with the wind, the other option is just to do little dots here. And that can illustrate a break in the rain or a pattern. Or if you're very good at actually drawing little teardrop shapes, you can make your rain that way. So there's a few different ways to do that. There's some ideas on patterns you can do. So thank you guys for stopping um, and taking some time to watch my video with the Pitter Pattern Book and the Art Project. And I would love to see you post in the comments the umbrellas that you have drawn, the patterns that you're working with. And as always, you're welcome to bring them into the library and show them to me. So see you guys soon.